What's going on, everyone? Happy Thursday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully, you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update for Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update with the latest news on COVID, influenza, mpox, hepatitis, all these different viruses that could be a health threat to you. We do daily pandemic updates. We even do tips once in a while. You know, I did a um, YouTube short earlier about how a mask does work during allergy season. That's right. You can wear a mask during allergy season to help prevent your allergy symptoms from really acting up. You know, it keeps the pollen out of your mouth and nose. Want to see more content like this? Subscribe to my channel down below. Like the video you see here, give it a thumbs up, share this with anyone you know, and if you have anything to say about anything you see today, which there's going to be a lot of stuff that you see today, leave a comment about it down below. All right, we do have a few news stories and a new study to talk about today. Then we're going to take a look at some wastewater data, some state data, and some weekly state data. Starting off today from Twitter, Texas vet who cares for 40,000 cattle said nearly every farm that had cows sick with bird flu also had sick workers. I had people who never missed work miss work. This is being tweeted out by me. Jess, there's a whole article. I did retweet this whole article. You can go on and read the whole article. It may be paywalled for you. may not be. It's hard to say. Sometimes uh, certain sites like Fortune is paywalled, but yeah, this is referring to bird flu, you know, H5N1 or any type of uh, bird flu, and people who work on farms are now becoming sick. We need these people to get tested for H5 animal. We need to know what's going on because it may not just stop there. If they are sick, there's potential, you know, farms. They have uh, maybe 18 wheelers that uh, show up, you know, big trucks that take uh, shipments of dairy products away from the farms. Well, say these workers are sick and they're interacting with the dairy workers. Well, then they go on to the dairy processing center, you know, on and on it goes to the grocery store. Then the grocery store workers could get sick, and then it gets passed on to you and I. So this is really serious. And there's another method. Some of these workers don't live on the farms. They may take uh, their illness home, pass it to their families, and, you know, that goes through the household, it goes through schools. I mean, we're at the tipping point here of potential human-to-human -human transfer transmission of H5N1. This is really serious and something that we need to keep an eye on, and it is starting to show up in wastewater in the south. Biobot put out a tweet saying that there are wastewater sites down there that, you know, the partners that they're with that uh, use wastewater and share the data with Biobot, it can detect influence A, which includes H5N1. We're observing slight increases in flu A in the south amidst declining respiratory virus activity nationally. Monitoring wastewater remains critical. And then they did do a full report. So that is something that is going to be needed to be watched carefully. Now, moving on to this, we are a you know, G-rated channel, family-rated channel. But I have to show you this. Mind the explicitive that they used in the tweet, but this is coming from Turn, and this has to do with the UK, or in England, for that matter. And they are saying this is the biggest rise in COVID positivity in a single week for nearly two years. Let's take a look here. Take a look at the graph and look at a picture. He put a red circle around it. Look at the COVID positivity rates right now in England. It is rapidly going up. And he says that is a 54% increase, leap. That is a huge leap. Now let's keep coming down here. Look what is going on over in the UK at this time, or in England. And it says, yes, KP.2 is on the rise in the UK. But, and there's, I'm, we're not going to read all these, but there's quite a few other variants. You can see JN 1.71, JN 1.13.1, on and on and on it goes, are all rising faster 
they have the KP.2 variant. So it's something we have to watch. Right now, KP.2 is on the rise here in the United States, but it's not causing an increase in cases just yet. However, we have to watch what happens with all these other variants. Given that these other variants are starting to cause something in the UK, as you know, we usually follow, or we used to follow what happens in the UK about three weeks. We lag them from three weeks. We're not necessarily going to do that this go around. It hasn't always been the case now for about the last year, two, year and a half, maybe even two years. But at the start of the pandemic, we did follow over there. Currently, we are not seeing a rise in the United States. However, do keep this in mind, and I did want to mention this today. Cinco de Mayo is coming this weekend. And it's a big mix. Again, holiday. It's a big Spanish holiday, I guess I should say. And a lot of people, you know, it's kind of like St. Patrick's Day. You don't have to be Irish. Everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day. And I've noticed that. A lot of people, no matter what your nationality is, do like to partake in Cinco de Mayo. So restaurants are going to be crowded this weekend. Definitely uh, restaurants that serve Spanish or Mexican food are going to be very busy this weekend. So uh, that could cause some spread. And with some of these other, you know, little smaller sub-variants, which may be soon become bigger sub-variants, it's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. So just wanted to make you aware of this, of what is going on in the UK. Now to that study I was telling you I have for today. High-risk patients with COVID symptoms should use PCR rather than rapid test, studies suggest. And let's face it, we all know these rapid tests, they are not great. They're not the best. They're not the most accurate with all these newer variants that can evade testing, evade the vaccine in some cases. Uh, yes, it is very important that uh, we take multiple tests or we try for a better test, which is PCR. And unfortunately, PCR testing is really expensive. So it's not the best option for everyone. Not everyone has access to it. Insurance, uh, in many cases now, just does not even cover it. I wanted to get a PCR test at one point. They were like, nope. Not going to happen. Your insurance is not covering it. Do you want to pay 300 bucks? It was something like that. Yeah, it was crazy. So I said, ah, no, we'll pass on that. This was back in the wintertime when I was sick. All right, I wanted to show you this. We have to talk about long COVID. And this, I probably should have timed this a little differently. It's actually going to lead up to something that I want to show you, which we look at every day. I think you know what we're leading up to, but... Let's just show you this first. Do you suspect someone you know has long COVID but just won't admit it or does not even know their health issues came from having COVID? I tweeted it last night. I retweeted it again this morning so it gets a little more attention. 93.5% of people said yes. Only 6.5% said no. 663 votes. And personally, if I could vote on this, which I could if I went to my other Twitter accounts, I would easily put yes. I know a lot of people with health issues, but they don't want to admit it came from COVID, or they'll say, oh, no, it just can't be COVID. And I actually did a, a, a tweet reply to someone saying, because um, some people say, oh, no, it's not from COVID. That, that's not what it was. The, the, the COVID is just a mild illness. And then you ask them, well, what do you think caused your new issues? I don't know. My doctors can't figure it out. Well, hello, COVID causes hundreds of different health problems, different symptoms. Long COVID, we're talking about here. So, yeah, it very well could be. And when you ask them, were you infected with COVID? Again, like I said, they always end up saying, oh, well, well I couldn't have been that. And on and on it goes here. There's a lot of different uh, stories. A couple of this person said, CD Twitter uh, said, CD writer said, CDT writer, a couple of my doctors say they see people all of the time that don't realize their symptoms are long COVID or don't want to come to terms with it. And someone else said several, they say, you get the idea. Now, this is actually going to lead us up to something in just a moment. You know what? Actually, let's go there first. We'll just go there now. Taking a look here, look at this, Philadelphia yesterday. Another 869 EMS calls after having 870-something on Tuesday and over almost 950 on Monday. Yes, this is not good. Now, today, it's 89 degrees outside, but yesterday wasn't as hot. 
So I don't know if it's because it's hotter out and people who have had COVID past winter now have long COVID and have all these different health issues. You know, heat strokes can happen easier, breathing difficulty problems because of asthma or COPD, which you may have gained from having lung damage with COVID. They can all show their ugly heads right now. So I don't know what's going on. It, I can tell you this much. The weather is going to be cooler here in the Northeast next week. If these EMS calls are still this high, we have a big problem. Something is seriously going on. I mean, this is, um, it's been a big increase. I mean, you saw, if you follow my updates every day, you saw for a while there, it was low, low 700s, some days in the 600s, that one day that didn't even hit 600, and now all of a sudden this starts happening. Continuing on, let's take a look at EMS calls in Montgomery County, not that busy right now, seizures, cardiac emergency, fall victim, general weakness, seizures, vehicle accident, respiratory emergency, and we can see Chester County is a little bit busier. There were quite a few sick calls just about a half hour ago. All right backtracking to something we would have normally have already shown you. I have to refresh this and take a look at this. Mid-Atlantic and parts of the Northeast. Pollen levels today. They're in the red. The Great Lakes in the red. But nationally, it's actually down a little bit. Only 35% of the country is in medium to high status versus yesterday, which was around 45%. The West Coast is not doing all that bad. And the Mid-South is not doing that bad for pollen as well. Hey, remember, once again, mask. It. I'm telling you, they work for pollen. Take a look at air quality values, and you're seeing this for the first time as I'm seeing this. I did not take a look at this earlier, and actually it's not that bad, with exceptions. I-95 corridor from Virginia up to Boston, just some minor yellow, some minor yellow speckled up through the south. And how about the west coast? Let's see, can we get an update out of California? I'm already seeing red in southern California. Can we see the rest of California? Okay, there we go. Not that bad. We're seeing a lot of green. Just a few sites that are constantly stuck in maroon for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with those sites. All right, moving on now. We have to come back to Philadelphia for a second because I skipped over things and I forgot to show you this. So where I was just showing you those EMS calls, it was 869. I can show you this. It's not COVID at the moment that's causing the uh, increase in EMS calls. Wastewater for the three treatment plants in Philadelphia, southwest, northeast, and southeast, although southeast is a little more flat, they continue to drop at this time, and there was a slight rise in the southwest wastewater plant, but that even has started to drop again, and this is as of May 1st, so this is up-to-date data, sometimes it's delayed, but hey, they just updated this yesterday. All right, let's go over to Walgreens. Walgreens this week, 12.6% positivity. The prior week was 13%. That is down 0.4%. Total test, 3,941. The prior week is 4,488. And let's just quickly take a look at, we'll just do two wastewater sites real quickly. And I say we should go down here. How about we come down to Memphis, Tennessee, and then we'll do something, I think, on the West Coast, just to be fair. And take a look here. Memphis, Tennessee, low for COVID. We'll say it's low at this time. It's not rising. RSV is low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is not rising at this time. HMPV, eh, it was dropping now, an ever so slight rise. Norovirus is flat at this time. Mpox, no issues. And hepatitis A, not seeing too much issues. There have been some detections, but we don't uh, concern ourselves too much with that. I think sometimes it exaggerates. I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research as to why it constantly shows so many uh, detections on these sites. All right, coming out to California, let's go to, how about we go down here to South County Regional Water Facility. This would be Gilroy, California. 110,000 population. Taking a look here. Low for COVID, flattened out low for RSV. Influenza A is low at this time. Influenza B has risen slightly. HMPV is starting to rise again. Norovirus is rising slightly. And no Mpox detections and a few hepatitis A detections at this time. Taking a look at some CDC data, which we'll update tomorrow. Hospital admissions in the past week, 5,615. That is down by 14.4%. Again, expecting an update out of that tomorrow. New Jersey. I have nothing for New Jersey today. They did not report today. Hopefully that is not a sign that New Jersey's going to be ending hospital reports with uh, you know the change the CDC is making. All right, taking a look at New York State today, and I do need to zoom this chart in again because there's something very interesting going on in New York State. 
they do have today 632 new cases. That's the most cases that they've reported quite some time. Even last week, they did not have a date with that many cases. And back on April 15th, they had a date with 621. So this is the most cases since April 1st. But how about hospitalizations? They did not rise again today. They actually dropped a little bit. It dropped to 433 with 38 people in the ICU. Uh, excuse me, it dropped to 424 with 36 people in the ICU. That was yesterday's number I just read. And taking a look here, you can see, again, it's slowing off. I'm still hopeful they can get below 400. We'll have to see. And if they don't, I think that would be a slightly higher bottoming than last year in the summertime. Let's take a look at that real quickly. Let me um, go back to last summer. And, okay, last summer at one point they did get down to 402. I am seeing they did get into the three upper 300s last year. We want to see if we can get to that or lower before the next wave. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right, moving on now. We actually have to switch to another browser. Connecticut this week so far reports 55 cases of COVID and 151 influenza cases. Nine cases of RSV. It's still around. I know for a fact it's around here in Pennsylvania. I saw someone post on social media, Facebook, in a com. I was reading, uh, you know, someone commented on someone's post. And you see it sometimes. It shows up in your feed. And it said, went to the doctor thinking I had allergies. Oh, no. Positive for RSV. So RSV is still a thing. It's just not in heavy circulation at this time. And there are nine cases of it in Connecticut. Chicago. Good news. Hospitalizations dropping. 5.29 is the daily average. Hospital bed use is at 0.8% for COVID. Emergency room visits, 0.4%. Laboratory confirmed cases, the daily average is 39. Deaths down. And vaccinations are actually up a little bit. 2,023. Now, taking a look at Massachusetts, and in Massachusetts we see, I do actually need to refresh this, just to make sure this is up to date, I think, yep, okay, so this is up to date, 9.9% .9 of emergency department visits are for respiratory disease, influenza severity is low, and COVID emergency department visits is minimal, hospitalizations are low as well, and finally ending with what is going on in the state of Washington, COVID, down 20% for emergency department visits, 0% change for influenza, RSV down 100%. Now for the percent of hospital admissions, COVID down 14%, influenza 0%, RSV down 100%, and ICU beds being occupied. 10 of them for COVID, less than 10 for influenza. That actually is a two increase for COVID, so they were less than 10 last week, if I remember correctly, and of course it would be because 10 minus 2 equals 8. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update. We will have another Pandemic Update again tomorrow with California, Los Angeles, some new CDC data, and, of course, whatever news there is to report on. If you learned anything, give this a thumbs up. Want to see more content like this? Subscribe down below. It is the best way to keep you safe and prepared for whatever is happening in the world of respiratory viruses such as COVID and the ever-evolving H5N1. Alrighty, folks, I'll see you all again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Thursday evening. Thanks for watching.